Hello, Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have a Mazda uh, CX3, I think. And it's a 1.5 Sky Active diesel. So we're looking at this engine here. So we're in the vehicle uh, started up. So this guy's got his own diagnostic machine. He's been clearing codes. Uh, he's tried to clean the EGR valve, uh, but he's got codes that are returning. So I'm going to use my launch Eurotab 3 diagnostic tool here and we'll have a look at the codes. So we've got manifold pressure sensor performance, exhaust pressure sensor performance and engine oil level too high. Now he said he's just had the oil level oil changed um, a couple of days ago. So we're going to go back, we'll read the data stream. So we've got the data stream here up. Exhaust differential pressure will accelerate up a little bit. So we've got these increasing. This one it seems to be barely moving. So I'd probably say that that's blocked. So now I've got up the manifold pressure here as well. So we've got the desired and the actual pressure of it. So you can see that the actual pressure is a little bit lower. If we accelerate the vehicle up, you can see there it's not reaching where it should be. So I think we hopefully it's just a case of these sensors are clogged up with carbon and we'll have to get them cleaned out. So we've got uh, what looks to be the manifold pressure sensor just down here. Now that doesn't look too bad to get to. Um, around the back over here, I think that's the exhaust pressure sensor. But that looks like a real pain because you can see the pipe just down there. It tucks under all of this area and I take it it comes back around somewhere down there. That's going to be a real pain in the arse to get out. So I'm going to see if I can clean it. Uh, where it is on the vehicle So I've just removed the two little 8mm bolts there from the clamp and we'll uh, get this plug opened up Just tuck that out of the way there Over there for a minute So these sensor now um, It's got a little clamp on them there, but you can just give these a little twist the clamp doesn't ever be that tight You can just pull it out So I'm going to use this it's a drill what a piece of uh, wire cable on it. I'm going to hopefully try and drill down and get that freed out. So first I'm just going to connect a midivac pressure gauge up to the to the sensor there. So if we see any sort of movement in these, then you know it's blocked. And now this one, that's blocked but it ain't even moving whatsoever. So uh, I might struggle to get this unblocked. I mean usually these when you squeeze it up, it comes up, but it, it gradually comes back down again. Uh, but this one must be sort of blocked completely solid because it's once you get it to where it sits, it's not even moving. So what this does is it reads the exhaust gas pressure, comes back to the sensor and reads how much pressure is coming from the turbo manifold there, exhaust manifold. So we managed to get that wire all the way in there. Hopefully we've done enough to unblock that. Let's test it out now. So what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to put the midivac holes on there. I've disconnected this end from the midivac. Now I've got some brake cleaner. I'm just going to spray the brake cleaner down the holes. You can see there we're filling up. See the flow now, we've got flow, so it's working its way through. Okay, we've got the minivac connected back on. Now, if we give it some squeezes. Now we are seeing a little bit of movement there, you see. I'd be, I'd be much happier if we weren't getting any movement whatsoever. So, I'm now going to connect up my launch DPF cleaning gun 
I'm going to spray some DPF cleaner through that. Okay, I've got the compressor out, the Launch UK gun, and the Launch DPF cleaner. Now I've got that hooked up to the sensor again. We're just going to try and spray some of the, the cleaning fluid through. It's good to come off, so we'll try and get it reconnected. Okay, so just holding it on by one hand. Just Obviously, it's a very, very slim tube down there. The, the tube itself isn't too slim, but the pipe itself is skinny, something like that. Um, of course, it's going to cause a lot of back pressure. But yeah, we managed to get the about half a litre of the fluid down there. Okay, we've got the medivac now connected back up. And uh, we can see there, if we squeeze it, Getting minor amounts of movement, but not too much. So, I'd say that's pretty much good to go now. Hopefully the sensor's okay. We'll uh, just get that refitted back on there. So again, we're just going to do some twist and motion, because it is quite difficult to get that clamp removed. But if we give it a little twist, left and right, it should slide back down the same way it came out. There we go, she's locked, locked down as far as I can go now. So that's it, we've just bolted down the two little 8mm bolts there, clamp it back in place so she's nice and solid. Now we're going to concentrate on this area, we're going to remove this in a minute, but we, I think first we'll try and get that uh, map sensor there on, open up. It looks like it's a uh, 30mm Torx, so I could imagine at the end of that is probably blocked up as well. What's this? It looks like we've got a little bit of plastic shield in here. It's already got a bolt missing from it. So we'll get that off. Maybe someone's already tried cleaning this. I mean, I know the car has been, you know, it has been worked on uh, by a mechanic and the owner himself. So I've got that bolt out there. And that'll allow you just to get the plug out from the center. I've got that bolt out. It's a T25, not a T30 actually. Put that in the tray there. wiggle this left and right just wiggle, try and keep it straight as you're wiggling it you don't want to you don't want to pull it to the left or right because you will snap the tip off it's going to give it a wiggle up and down right I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting that out uh, just spread it up with some some, some lubrication there um, Let's just see if we can get it out. Doesn't want to come out. You can't, you got to be gentle with them, you can't pull them too, too much. Don't want to break it, it's a plastic sensor at the end of the day. Okay, we got it out. Like I said there, there's a little plastic tip on it, you don't want to break off. But it's sort of clogged in there with some carbon, so we'll get that cleaned out. Okay, so we've now connected that sensor back up. We'll give it a little bit of a clean, clean up with some uh, electrical contact cleaner and that. Uh, we're going to open this pipe and see what the EGR valve like. Now, the guy has said he's already taken this off and cleaned it, but we'll just check how good of a job he's done. So we've got the bolts off. We expected to see soot, but let's just have a look inside these areas. That inlet manifold is completely clogged up in it. EGR valve definitely needs a clean, I'd say. Just using a bit of brake cleaner there. And we'll use the actuation test to see is the EGR valve opening. Yep. Okay, we've got the live data back on. Now I can already see the manifold pressure is still not where it needs to be. Um, it's difficult to say why that is. I don't know if it's the dodgy sensor at the minute or... Uh, mm, yeah, but anyway, this one, exhaust gas pressure, you can see if we increase the revs now a little bit. That's coming, coming up nicely. It was just about barely moving before. Now 
Now, I would like to run a chemical-based cleaner, so some of this stuff basically through the intake to try and see if we can make a difference on that intake manifold. Uh, but the customer doesn't want to spend the money, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so we'll get back in. We'll do a few more tests on the sensor and possibly... I mean... I'm trying to think why the manifold pressure would be lower than it is, lower than it's expected to, or desired to be. Either a leak, which is uncommon on these, and if it had a leak, you'd see sort of black soot everywhere. Um, either a leak or turbo isn't isn't spooling up properly, or the sensor's just dodgy. Okay, unfortunately, we can't get a sensor today, so I'd like to swap over the sensor. Um, and hopefully that would f fix it, I'm, I'm thinking. But for now, I think we are going to be just about done on it. If we get the sensor back in, as long as the customer comes back, we'll, we'll continue the video from there. Um, but that's about it. We are going to be all done. See you in the next video. Uh, well, sorry. Before we do that, we're going to go inside and clear the codes off. So we'll clear the fault memory. And what I'll do, do is I'll take it for a drive. Don't want to just end the video there, I suppose. Just read, make sure all the codes have gone. Engine, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Engine oil level too high. Right, so we'll get a, the extractor pump and remove a little bit of oil, slightly over maybe half a litre or something. So before we do that, I think first we'll just take it on a test drive. Okay, we'll take it on a few miles test drive. Okay, we've just finished the test drive. We'll get the fault reader out and see what's come back so we've just got the oil oil too high there now rather than just trying to drain the oil out I'd, I'd probably suggest just doing the oil again um, it's probably diluted from fuel uh, maybe it's been trying to constantly regen because of the faults that it had um, so I'd really suggest but it's difficult um, the customer doesn't really want to spend any more money here um, I've already offered it to him. Um, yeah, so I'm, I I can only do what I'm authorized to do. Um, doesn't want to spend the money on sorting the oil out, so I think we're gonna we're gonna have to leave it at that for now. Right, that's it. I'll see you next time.